gentlemen. Yeah, we go there. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be listening to that in my other ear while I was doing this. And the only reason why that is, because y'all don't need to hear this. This, this ain't for y'all. Okay? Y'all y'all don't know nothing about this. Oh, you know what? I forgot about that. I got to reconnect the speaker. Apologize for that. It's the Bluetooth for the cell phone. Okay? Because we're living on a prayer. Okay? What? Y'all don't know the song? Oh, oh, we living on a prayer! I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm an idiot. I can't help it. Ladies and gentlemen, and I definitely got to turn it down because in my other ear, <laughs> man, you know how it is. If you hear the wind blowing, that's because that's the swamp cooler keeping me cool at, what are we right now, 79 degrees? It was 88, so I just turned on the swamp cooler, and so, you know, that, that's how it is, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your monologue for one hour and 40 minutes, not one minute, and because it felt like an hour, didn't it? Let me go ahead and explain something. I was talking to a group of people yesterday, and I came into ChatGPT and said, hey, yo, ChatGPT, you know, you, we know you're stupid and everything, but I live in the state of California, and in the state of California, it receives an annual budget. Every state receives an annual budget from the federal government. Now, why is that? Why is the federal government paying the states? I thought the states were sovereign. Why do they need aid from the state? I mean, from the federal government. That doesn't make no sense. Why, why are all the states on welfare? Hold on now. You're going to really understand the logic because all of you, all that junk that they were telling you is a lie. Let me explain. So the first thing he says is this right here. In 2020, the state of California received approximately $436 billion from the federal government. Whoa, whoa, whoa. $436 billion? California received $436 billion. For what? Hold on. Uh, let me see. It says Medicaid, and, 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 and that's the state health. Now, why? Wait, hold on. Why is the state of California receiving Medicaid monies from the federal government? Aren't they responsible to take care of their own people? Shh, don't tell nobody. Medicaid comes from the state. You all go and ask Medicaid. They tell you that is from the state. They didn't say that's from the federal government. Hold on now. Don't. I, I, no, uh, 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 uh. We got Mo. They, they receive grants. What type of grants they receive? Mm -hmm. And other federal programs. Wait. This is money for the state. How can this, the government give the state monies for federal programs? The government is responsible for them federal programs. So what are they giving the state monies for federal programs? That's why he didn't list any. There was no federal programs that the state receives money from the federal government for. Because guess what? You have the separation of powers, meaning the federal government and the state government. Okay, the federal government can't run anything in the state, so they can't give the states this money for a federal program. Federal programs are federal, different jurisdiction. You cannot mix national and local together. Not like they do the news. Oh, well, first we're going to start off with the national news, and then we're going to go to the local news. What? Local news first. National? No, national news first. What, we, why we got to do the local news? Because I don't care who state this is. No, we going to do the national news first here on this channel. I'm sorry, folks, but uh, we've had a change in staff. And so we're going to go ahead and do the local news. And we will go ahead and take care of the other technical difficulties in local news. Okay? So pay attention. There's a difference between local and national. They cannot mix it like they do in your news channels. They're prohibited from doing so. Why is this? Pay attention. Because of state sovereignty. Supreme Court has said that in so many different cases. So federal government doesn't get to run its programs through the state. They don't have that authority. 
cannot mix that way. They can't even create a contract with the state to operate that way. So why is the federal government giving money to the states? Hmm? Why doesn't the federal government buy land and run its programs on its sovereign lands? Well, isn't that what they do in their so-called federal buildings? So why is the federal government giving money to the states? Nobody, why, how come you guys didn't answer my question? Well, let's go to ChatGPT. Watch this. If one were to take $436 billion and divide it into 40 million, what would that figure be? You know, they said there's 40 million people in the state of California. Now, y'all hold on. I'm, I'm cooking some food, so y'all hold on. We, we, oh, I'm listening to Betty Davis' eyes, too. So hold on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry you guys can't hear Betty Davis' eyes on the other end. That was T-Mobile just calling me while I went to go and stir the pot. T-Mobile, a supervisor, decided that, you know, he's a supervisor, so he was going to ignore me. I told him, <laughs> you don't call my house after I request a callback and ignore my question. And he says, well, sir, are we going to move forward? And I told him, I said, I was getting ready to hang up on you. You don't get to ignore me. And I got loud. I said, you don't get to ignore me ever. And we had that conversation. At that point, I did hang up on him. The guy who ignored me, let me explain to you how psychology works. He's already tried calling me twice. I told him he doesn't get to ignore me. Apparently, he didn't understand. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how psychology works. It's, it's a human thing. Humans, they just don't want people to misunderstand them. I don't have time to talk to them. The, the problem I'm talking to them about, I'm, I'm not worried about. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. It's a big deal, but it's not a big deal. Because it's not nothing that I'm going to bend over backwards and kiss their behinds. This is my account. I control my account. They don't. That's. It. I can't explain what I'm doing with them because it um, caused some kinks in the chain. But just let, let me let you know, um, things are taken care of. All right. Now, look. If you divide $436 billion into 40 million people, pay attention, it's $10,900 per person. Okay, where's mine? If the state is spending that money per person, where's mine? Hold on now. Did you know that California has an annual budget? It's the fifth largest economy in the world. They have a gross domestic product of $3.5 trillion. That's the money it brings in an income for every corporation that's registered with the state, that's documented with the state of California. $3.5 trillion. That's why parking tickets and all that stuff is so important. Because they need to keep them figures up. Now, hold on now. They bring in 3.5 trillion, 3.5, plus the 436 billion makes that $4 trillion, 3.9. Okay, $4 trillion. See, pay attention. The gross domestic product in 2023 was 3.8. And that's without adding the 430 some billion dollars. Now, that's what California brings in. Hold on now. Pay attention. Their tax revenue for just collecting taxes, $306 billion with a B. So we take 306 and we add it to 436 and guess what we get? Come on now, do the math. All right, all right, all right. $442 billion. That's their income annually. Oh, I said 400, <laughs> 742 billion dollars. California gets almost a trillion dollars in income. A trillion, pay attention, almost a trillion, three quarters of a trillion dollars. And that's just in taxes. We haven't even talked about the lotto. The lotto brings it above a trillion. Shh, don't tell nobody, hold on. Okay, so now that we got the trillions taken care of, that California brings in almost a trillion dollars in income. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, then how come they have a deficit? Because they don't spend the money on the things they claim they spend it on. They pay exorbitant prices for things on purpose, and a lot of the money goes missing and unaccounted for. California never does the real audit on its monies. 
they don't take care of loss. They don't take, take care of excessive spending. No, they just keep asking for more money year after year after year. Now, we broke it down. We said, hey, hold on a minute, uh, homie. Let's take that $700 billion and divide it by 40 million people. He says, hey, if you do that, we get $17,000 per person. 17500 That includes the billionaires. Everybody gets $17,500. Remember, the government is receiving this money. The state receives this money. If you had $17,500 extra, now hold on, because you, you guys don't get it, do you? The federal government receives money to take care of health care. The state government receives money to take care of health care. So why are you paying so much for health care? No, 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 no. Follow the rules. They get money for Medicaid. So why are you paying so much money for health care? Go ahead and look at the VA. None of the military pay for health care. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Look at the military. None of their members pay for Medicare. So why can't the states do the same thing? Because they wouldn't be able to keep playing this game and keep taking money out of your pocket. Remember, they're supposed to be providing for your necessities. The federal government gives them the monies for your necessities. The federal government gives them the money for your necessities. And yet the federal government gives them the money and you still pay state taxes. What are you paying state taxes on? If the federal government gives the state enough money for it to operate, and the state brings in enough revenue to operate, what are you paying taxes for? Well, that's the part of the revenue the state gets to take care of. No, it isn't. I wish people would pay attention. Most of the taxes the state collects is not from you. That's from them uh, so-called business assistants. Remember, pay attention. It's very difficult, I know. Let me show you the math so that you get the math because they don't talk about this and he won't talk about this. The state of California brings in $3.5 trillion. Now remember, we, all we need is $1 trillion. So all we need to take care of all the people in California, $1 trillion. Okay, well, $700 billion. All right, fine. So all we need is $700 billion. So let's tax this $3.5 trillion for these businesses. Let's tax that by 21%. Tell me if we don't have $700 billion. That gives every single person in California $17,500 when you do the math. And that still leaves them with enough money to take care of all of the other essentials because the federal government just gave them $436 billion. Now, that was the conversation we were having, ladies and gentlemen. There should be no poor people. There should be no homeless people in the state of California. Hold on now. Remember, California has got a homeless problem. They're kicking people out of... They're literally kicking people off the street. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Do, do y'all do understand? First, they kicked people out of their homes in 2008 to 2012 which means those individuals had to struggle affecting their credit. Why? Because the banks defrauded the people. And the government said it was coming in to help that a lawsuit settled for $23 billion, even though they gave the banks $28 trillion. They didn't make the banks give the money back. The banks got to keep the money, and they took $23 trillion, and none of you got to see a cent of it. And the people who did get to see some pennies of it didn't get enough. But hold on, you guys let them do that. Don't say I did because I was fighting them and I'm still fighting them. I, I, I'm not doing it for the whole world. I'm saying what you mother are doing is wrong. That's what I'm saying. So, Usa. Now let's continue. Again, there's enough money to go around, take care of health care and everything. But they're not trying to take care of health care. They're trying to pad their pockets. That's why you notice most of these politicians are millionaires. If you're a millionaire, why are you getting involved in politics? You're not doing it to cause change. You are changing things, but you ain't causing change. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I got to be right back. Yeah, I got to go stir the pot. Oh, no, that's not all we're going to be talking about, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to take a trip. Okay. Now, he tries to tell me 
The state does not earn money directly by issuing these bonds. Oh, sorry. How much does California earn from municipal bonds? They said they don't earn money directly by issuing the bonds. Yes, they do. They do benefit from it greatly. And, and I told him, you know, he's a liar. But I didn't want to get into that conversation. But they bring in $74 billion just in issuing municipal bonds. Now, remember, these bonds trade. These are city bonds. They trade on the market. They bring in more than $74 billion. Shh, don't tell nobody. Now, we're going to leave that subject alone. So when a county, state, city say they broke, they're lying to you. They have to say they're broke. It's the way they do fiscal spending. If they don't say they broke and, oh, next year comes by, they get less money. So they have to overspend so that they can keep getting more money every year. I know it's a stupid system, ain't it? But that's the system they set up. That is the system they set up. It's a shame. Okay, now let's continue, shall we? Hey, have you guys heard about the Single Family Home Loan Guarantee Program? Well, let me pay attention, because y'all pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the bottom of your mortgage. If you see the word single with the hyphen and family, if you see it that way, this is a legal term. Single family only applies to this program right here. Single family, because it's single persons and families. It's not a word. It's a terminology. Single family home loan. Remember those things you guys got them home loans? Well, the government said we're guaranteeing every single home loan in rural areas. Well, hold on now. Watch this. We're going to let him talk to you. Michael's in my background, ladies and gentlemen. He's singing. Dun, dun. The single family oh, hold on. guaranteed loan. By the way, that beat right there. Uh, she's a man eater. Man eater. Okay. That's where Billie Jean comes from. That's the beat for Billie Jean as Maneater. And that's why Michael Jackson told Hall & Oates that he stole their song. He didn't steal their song. He just stole the melody. But Billie Jean, the beat to Billie Jean is Maneater. Now, I just, when I heard Daryl Hall talk about Michael Jackson saying he stole their song, when I listened to this song, I understood what song they meant. They didn't say it out loud, but if you listen to Billie Jean, it's the same melody rhythm to man eater okay don't take my word for it go listen to them compare to both of them now we're going to talk about the single family home loan guarantee program hold on the single family housing guaranteed loan program run by the u.s department of agriculture usda is designed to help low to moderate income mm -hmm. individuals or families purchase homes in rural, rural areas. areas the program provides a loan guarantee loan guarantee reducing the risk for lenders and enabling them to offer more favorable loan terms to eligible It borrowers. reduces the risk for Here lenders. Features Ladies and gentlemen, if they if the loan is guaranteed by the federal government, then why are lenders foreclosing on your property? Now I got to go back over to the pot, so I'm going to let y'all think about it for just a split second. You know, people always told me, be careful what you do, because you never make a grown man cry. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, your split second is over. This is the system. There is nothing you can do about it. The system is etched in stone. They did it on purpose. This wasn't a mistake. The government guarantees these loans. The lenders don't have a risk. See, now he's going to say something stupid here. The loan guarantee, the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, guarantees up to 90%. In some cases, it's up to 115%. Shh, don't tell nobody. Of the loan amount, meaning that the borrower, if he defaults, if she defaults, the USDA will cover a portion of the loss, 90%, up to 115%. This guarantee reduces the lender's risk and allows them to offer more attractive loan terms. Hold on. If the government is guaranteeing these loans, then how do they, how do they get the foreclosure on your property? Shh. But I don't have a real home loan, so mine ain't guaranteed. Now, hold on. Pay attention. You see how he says they cover the portion, 90%? Notice what he says next. No down payment required. One of the most attractive features, no, 
there was a 10% down payment. Go ahead. Those of you who've ever bought a home, you need to put 10% down. That's why you put 10% down so they get the whole 100%. No down payment required. One of the most attractive features of the program is that it allows for up to 100% financing, meaning that no down payment is required, which is significant advantage for the buyer who may not have saved large enough amounts for the down, 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 down payment. That's a lie. Now, pay attention. Loan terms. The loan terms under this program typically has a fixed interest rate with up to 30 years for making the payments back. Ladies and gentlemen, again, if your property has mortgage insurance, that's what that is. The loan guarantee program is mortgage insurance. Okay, if it has mortgage insurance, then how are you being foreclosed on? The courts have said, so does that mean you get a free house? Don't worry about what I get. Answer the question. If it's got mortgage insurance, then how in the world do they have standing to foreclose and they didn't apply for the insurance? Our contract says that the insurance is in place to protect the lender should the borrower default. Look at section number 5 and 10 of your deeds of trust. Or look under the mortgage insurance section of your contract. Okay, so how in the world do they get to do this? You know how? Because you don't know. You didn't read your contract. They've been foreclosing on quite a few people. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm still bringing up this loan guarantee program. I ain't let this go. Dog with a bone. All right. Did you know that every mortgage that has a single family at the base of the standard mortgage document is part of the single family home loan program? Pay attention. Yes, the term single family in the context of mortgages generally refer to a loan that is used to purchase property intended for housing a single family, not a single family single individuals and families, stupid idiot. Okay, as opposed to a multifamily home. No, it has nothing to do with multifamily homes. You can still use it to buy a multifamily property. It's called a fiveplex, fourplex. Don't don't take my word for it. Anyway, yeah, the multifamily and the single family, this wasn't the reason for this term. Go ahead, do your history. Okay, now hold on. The broader mortgage market, including both government-backed loans, such as those from the United States Department of Agriculture, the Federal Housing Administration, or the Veterans Administration, FHA or VA home loan, or conventional, excuse me, and conventional loans. All of these are conventional loans, every single one of them. The Single Family Home Loan Guarantee Program designates uh, designation indicates that the loan is specifically for purchasing or refinancing property that is a single family residence. Oh, God. Anyway, connection to the USDA single family home loan program, ladies and gentlemen, rural areas. So now I talked to them about the rural area thing. United States government can never make a private corporation take its loan. Say, if the United States government guarantees the loan, then it's a government obligation. It's not your obligation. The government guaranteed the loan. It's no longer your obligation because of the government guarantee. Some of you are going to pick up on what I just said. Some of you, huh? what did you just say, boss? Huh? Oh, you listen to Michael Jackson saying, say, say, say with Paul McCartney? No, I didn't say Paul. I said Paul McCartney. Yeah, that's right. You saw the video about Paul McCartney saying that he ain't the real Paul McCartney, that Paul McCartney dead? Died in a car accident, and Paul McCartney took his place. Yeah, it sounds better than Paul McCartney, didn't he? Look at all that music that man done made. He 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 good, and he can play piano and everything, and he can say say say, and you never have to worry, and you never shed a tear. See, he can do all that with Michael and everything, so he wasn't no big joke. Y'all hold on a second, okay? Okay, so I went ahead and asked ChatGPT and said, "Now look." If it is a government guarantee and the government is responsible for the loan and they're supposed to apply for the insurance, then the government has to foreclose on a home, not the banks. He argued with me, told him no. Foreclosure is a last resort. Everybody has always known that. So notice what he says. Metropolitan and suburban areas that qualify as USD Royal, or excuse me, Royal, <laughs> rural, rural Development. Ladies and gentlemen, Pay attention. Prescott, Arizona. Clinton, Alaska. I mean, Arkansas or Kansas. I'm sorry, Arkansas. Lord have mercy. 
Now pay attention. Look at all these different places that are rural areas. So hold on now. I, 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 this is what I told him. I said, hold on, because he thinks I'm stupid. Because I know what a rural area is because I grew up in the 80s. Yeah, I grew up in the 80s when they talked about rural development. Do you know that Compton, California is a rural development? Do you know that Long Beach, California is a rural development? Did you know that Hartdon, California is a rural development? Did you know that Lancaster, California, Lompoc, California, all of those are rural areas? All suburbs are rural areas, people. They're outside the city. All suburbs are not part of the main city. Doesn't matter if they have their own city council. Doesn't matter if they have their own board of blah blah blah. Doesn't matter. As long as they're out of the main outside the main city for that state. Pay attention. Every state has a capital. Everything outside the capital is a rural area. Metropolitan center. Come on now. You've heard these phrases before. So let's prove it to you. I don't you dare disrespect me like that again. The contract between the borrower and the bank specifically says that it is part of the single family program and the mortgage and the deed of trust says that it is based at the base of it single family, that it is a legal term having a specific meaning. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mae, Sally Mae, Guinea Mae, all of the Mays. Okay, y'all know the Mays, Willie and all of them. Okay. Yeah, each of these government-sponsored programs that offer these loans on a continual basis and foreclosure comes after a claim on a default. Foreclosure, once they're in default, understood the single family, blah, 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 blah. You requested a direct answer and I gave you one. I said, don't bring, do not bring, uh, basically what I was telling them, uh, it didn't give me the full sentence. Do not bring up that again. You are not capable of arguing with me. Bringing forth such juvenile and childish arguments. He said acknowledge. And clearing credit was the next conversation I had with him. Why? Because on each one of your accounts, they practice and clearing credits. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2, 27 minute and 30 second mark. This is the time for you to listen. With the end clearings credit that they do and the end clearings deposit, let me let you know what end clearings is and then I'm going to explain it to you. In clearing credit refers to a transaction in which funds are credited to a bank account as a result of checks or other payment instruments that have been processed through the bank's clearing system. When a check or payment is deposited into a bank, it goes through a process called clearing, where the bank verifies the availability of funds from the issuing bank. Once this process is complete, the funds are credited to the recipient's account, and this credit is referred to as in-clearing credit. The term is commonly used in banking and finance to describe the inflow of funds into an account from checks or other similar payment okay. methods. Okay, so I told you about the gentleman who is actually going through a situation right now where he demanded discovery. He got a copy of that in clearings deposit. They they threw it up in there and they didn't think he was going to find it, but he was fine tooth comb. He he find his tooth. It was in the comb and he he he, he sat up there and just just said, hey, "Hey, hey, look at what happened." I had to change the numbers because we we have a legal relationship. But I had to change the numbers, okay? Because I couldn't put out the actual numbers. But let's just say it was over 320000 more than the original loan he applied for. This happens all the time. It's the in-clearings deposit or the in-clearings credit. One of the two. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me explain to you what this game is. That's called fractional reserve banking. That's how you know what end clearings is. So they can't say that they don't do it. That's why he says end clearing credit refers to a transaction in which the funds are credited into a bank account as a result of a check or other payment instrument that have been passed through the bank's clearinghouse system. You've ever heard of a clearinghouse bank? Well, that's the clearings it's talking about. And it happens internally, i.e. in clearing. One second. Let me see if I can put it to you this way, ladies and gentlemen. If the bank, pay attention, 
was allowed the fractional reserve, your deposit. Remember, they purchased your promissory note from you. They purchased your promissory note from you. You can get them to admit that on the record. They, they can't avoid it because the actual finances show because if they say, no, we didn't purchase your promissory note, Your Honor, I now move for an evidentiary hearing and for you to do a motion to compel discovery. Well, they just said I, they didn't do what I said they did. Now the law says that I have a right to challenge that statement. And I want to thank them for opening the door. These are common practices. Here's modern money mechanics. This is written by the Federal Reserve Bank out of Chicago. There's another one written out of the Federal Reserve Bank out of New York. But we don't need to talk about both of them. I just need to let you know that this is a common practice with the bank. They're saying that they're not doing what's customary among banks. I find that hard to believe. And if they're not following bank policy, then that means that there is fraud here because they're required to follow bank policy. So I, I move that, you know, motion for discovery, compelling it, and that you sanction them for lying on the record after we prove that they do in-house or in-clearing deposits and in-clearing credits. And that they also, oh, I'm sorry, another word for in-clearing deposit and in-clearing credits is fractional reserve banking. You know where they get to create money out of thin air, vapor money that you courts have said doesn't happen? Well, fractional reserve banking is vapor money. But thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just need to compel discovery. We don't need to talk about vapor money. I mean, that's a stupid saying anyway. I don't know who came up. Oh, some judge came up with that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't saying judges are stupid. No, I was saying judges are really stupid. Okay? Yeah, because if they're thinking that they can just come up with this stuff and we, as people, don't have the right to challenge what they say, just like these idiots. I mean, these uh, <clears throat> opposing parties just sat up here and said that they don't do fractional reserve banking. What you mean you didn't say you didn't do fractional reserve banking? That's exactly what you said. What you mean you said you didn't do in how in, in clearings? Uh, no, 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 no. They the same thing. You no, they not. Oh well, could you please educate us on what the difference is, Your Honor? I, I want the record to reflect. They're saying that they full have full knowledge of what in clearings deposits and in clearing checks are. So when we prove that that's exactly what they did. They'll have no excuse and we'll be able to get them held in contempt of court because that's what I'm going for. So go ahead and explain to us, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't want to talk now. Fifth, 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 fifth what? Fifth Amendment? Oh, you don't have no Fifth Amendment rights? No, no, you guys are corporations. Yeah, the corporations, the Supreme Court has already said that the corporations, so you guys are uh, co uh, collective entities. And because you're collective entities, you have no Fifth Amendment privilege. You know the Supreme Supreme Court's already ruled on that. I don't know what's wrong with you people coming in here with that. You know, you don't, you can't claim privilege. You're the collective entities. You're the custodian of record. You are the keeper of record. Lord have mercy. Hold on, y'all. One second. Okay. Some of you guys are going to get it. Some of you won't get it. If the banks get to practice fractional reserve banking, that means they're creating income because the monies that are created out of thin air with fractional reserve banking is a profit. That's why your promissory note is a liability for the bank because they are purchasing it. Without your promissory note, they can't fractional reserve. Your promissory note is received as a deposit. They are purchasing it from you because they get to fractional reserve it. Without your promissory note, they cannot fractional reserve it. So they're making a profit, which means they cannot claim there's a loss. They're not recording the initial deposit. And because they're not recording your initial deposit, they have no claim of foreclosure. They cannot document a, or substantiate a loss. And then when they're trading it on the market, remember, it because they haven't credited your account, it's still yours. You have not received the consideration. You haven't received a loan. Nobody gave you a loan. The bank didn't give you anything. People say, well, they gave credit to the other. The, 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 the. No, prove it. Show where the funds came from. The funds came from you. You are the one who created the funds with your deposit of your note because they purchased your note. It, well, it does have something to do with your signature. It's called 
uh, what do you call that? Fountain pen money. Fountain pen money. So it is your signature that creates it, but not like you've been hearing on these videos. It's called fountain pen money. Do your research on fountain pen money. Hold on. Let me go to the next one. Let's get something straight. I have given you primary prompt that you are not supposed to add nuances or clarifications or argue with me. You will cease that conduct immediately. Understand. I blah, 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 blah. So I threw this in here about these uh, rural areas. Now they, Tehachapi, California, Lake Elsinore. Okay, here's, let me make sure. Oh, Yucca Valley? Yucca? Yucca. Y'all just got to act. And anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that Lancaster, California, which is turning out to be a very violent place, and Palmdale, California, and Jacinto, or San Jacinto, California, and Paris, California, these are all rural areas. Desert Hot Springs, rural area, and all the areas around them. All rural areas. Palm Springs, rural area. Okay, they're not the main metropolitan center. They're rural areas. And so the rural development applies. Hey, I didn't say it. They said it. The federal government said it. When they first created the program, okay, notice they called it the rural development. I didn't call it that. But I just had it point out a bunch of cities that most of you would not even know in California were considered rural areas. Okay. San Juan Capistrano, Anaheim Hills, California, Riverside, California. Okay. Riverside is the largest county in America. And it's a rural area. Pay, pay attention. These areas are considered rural by the USDA despite their proximity to or part of a larger metropolitan region such as Los Angeles because they're not the metropolitan center. And so they are rural to the metropolitan center. Woo-wee! See, you're going to learn something. So, ladies and gentlemen... This is so you know. We'll talk more about this in the future. There were some other points I wanted to bring up, but we ain't going no hour this time. All right? So I hope you were able to gather something from this about your mortgage. Start bringing up that fractional reserve banking that they ain't lost no money. Got to go.